I'm gonna keep this week's video as short and sweet as possible because I have an important message. Here's what you need to avoid when buying a house in Vero Beach, Florida. Okay, first things first, this is so cliche, but you have to be careful who you pick to help um, with your home search and purchase. One person does not cost more than the next, so you might as well do your homework and get an experienced, highly skilled, and highly uh, recommended real estate professional to help you. Do not, I repeat, do not walk into a real estate office and work with the agent covering the front desk. This is called floor time, and brokers usually put their new agents on floor time to give them something to do. You will never, never find a highly skilled and experienced agent sitting around in the lobby of a real estate office. Mark my words. Also be wary about picking someone randomly online. Photos are very deceiving and agents in Vero Beach are notorious for having outdated photos on their websites for, from like 10 and 20 years ago. I'm trying to save you here, please just don't. Okay, this next one is important for the everyday home buyer to know. Fizbos, AKA for sale by owners, do not equal a better deal. I promise you this is not some like weird real estate shtick. There is a reason so many people start, start off for sale by owner and end up using a real estate agent to sell their home. And that reason is that for sale by owners overprice their properties. I see it every dang day. People want to save on the real estate commission so they put it for sale on their own which is fine, but then they make the biggest mistake on their pricing strategy. They want the most from the sale, so they price it higher thinking they'll get more, but what they usually get are crickets. No one wants to buy a Toyota for the price of a Porsche. Many people who list their homes themselves for a sale by owner do cooperate with buyers that are represented by a real estate agent on the buying side. But again, I just caution you to pay attention to the true market value of any home you're interested in. Unrepresented sellers also may pose a higher liability depending on whether or not they know what the heck they're doing. Many in cases they do not. And we're dealing with hundreds of thousands of dollars hanging in the winds. To me, that's not a risk worth taking. That's not a gamble I would ever be making. Oh snap, she's rapping. Okay, this next one may be a bit controversial, but I do not recommend anyone get their lending, AKA their mortgage to purchase their next home through a big bank. Don't friggin' do it. You will hate yourself. And you may be thinking, well, Rachel, my last purchase was with a big national bank and it was just fine. Well, congratulations, you are literally a unicorn. I have always had the best experience with my own purchases as well as hundreds of clients' purchases when dealing with a mortgage broker directly. They have the inside channel to the best loan packages and incentives, the best, most competitive rates, and a degree of communication and flexibility unmatched by any big bank. I have seen so many deals die in the last week or two right before closing because the lender was a big bank and they stunk so bad at communicating all that time and money lost literally thousands of people's hard-earned money and next their home dead in the water i think you get my point don't do it okay i'm running out of time here here are other mistakes you want to avoid when buying a house be careful about putting in lowball offers listen i love a good deal but if you anticipate the need to do some negotiations on inspection items like if the house seems like it needs worker repairs, lowballing the initial offer could hurt you and cause your seller to stonewall you for the rest of the deal and any negotiations that need to happen forward. It could be more hurtful than helpful. You also wanna make sure that you and your agent review the title commitment that you received from the title company within the first two weeks of the contract and also review the municipal lien search and the permit search. If your title company does not automatically pull these, you need to request them. Next is do not buy anything for the new house before your closing. This could screw up your debt to income ratio, it flags your credit, it's a nightmare, and it's also not smart. Don't buy things like furniture or decor for a house that isn't yours yet. Don't do it. You need to pay attention to flood zones. Know your zone and get insurance quotes as early as possible. 
We used to wait until the last week or two of the contract period before getting quotes, but here in Florida, the insurance market is really kooky now, so you have to shop insurance early. If there are any previous claims on the home, they will get flagged and could make your insurance options way more slim, as a lot of carriers won't even touch a house with an insurance claim within the last five years. This personally happened to me on my house that I purchased, so I'm forewarning you. This will also give you plenty of time to shop around for the best price and understand early on what is the financial impact gonna be um, for that insurance policy. I've seen sales die in the water because they got insurance in the 11th hour and it was too expensive and they couldn't get their loan approved. Okay, so last one for now. When you're looking for your next home, think about the future, the next 10 years. Does this home provide enough space and features for you to grow into it? The average person moves every five years, and that's great if that's what you're going for, but it can be really financially beneficial to pick your home and stay long-term. Stability is also just an important part of life, says the realtor who moves every three years. But it is, it's important. So make sure the home that you're picking has the ability for you to grow into it and that it's not gonna force you to move based on your life circumstances. Okay, there you have it folks. Those are my tips on what you need to look out for or avoid if you're buying a home in Vera Beach, Florida. If this is helpful to you, go give it a like, please. Uh, let me know, let me know that it's helpful, give it that like. And if you need somebody to help you with your real estate needs, give my team a call.